I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. Before we begin, just want to remind you to like, subscribe, and follow wherever you listen to us so you don't miss any episodes or bonus stuff that we do. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And um, it's time, guys. It's time. We've got to talk about that episode. Because we've never talked about that episode before in great detail. We've, yeah, we've never we've never discussed it. No, no. It's, it's time now because Sandra recently finished a rewatch of the whole series. So it's fresh in her mind, reasonably so. Um, and I vowed never to watch it again. So there's no point waiting for me to finish my rewatch because my rewatch will end on 1519. Isn't it weird that they went with an odd number of episodes? That's so fucking strange. <laughs> so we were like, right, okay, it's fresh in Sandra's mind. Enough time has passed that Carly can maybe get through the Wikipedia article. I'll be all right. So this is the special <laughs> hate episode, <laughs> which I think is what we're going to call it. Yeah. Uh, hate, hating on 1520. Um. I know there are a lot of people out there that thought 1520 was beautiful. Um, We are not those people. Sorry. Yeah. But it's been a couple of years now. So we've all got a little bit of space from the trauma. But far more importantly than that, we've got more context from Jared and Jensen. And I think Mm -hmm. that's worth taking into consideration as well. Especially Jensen's feelings on it. Because I feel like he's got more vocal about it. Over the last, I don't know, like the last, the last few cons, it feels like a lot of barn scene questions have come up, and he's given very similar answers to them. Do you still you watch- feel that Jared maybe still a more likes the episode more than Jensen does? Well, Jared didn't die in the middle of a barn, so right. Maybe. But I mean, like when when they were talking, because again, we we really couldn't get a lot of we couldn't get a lot of details or thoughts from the actors until after it aired. And I just remember a lot of the after interviews with Jared, like maybe even online via like zoom or whatever, it was a lot of, well, you know, we, we wanted to call back to this or we wanted to focus on this, or we had, we had some input on this. And I just find it very Mm -hmm. interesting that I think, you know, I think Jared championed it, I think, a bit more than Jensen did. And I think Jensen, by default, for whatever reasons, not being able to talk about it or whatever was behind the scenes or whatever he was, you know, thinking about, maybe like playing the long game that he just didn't. And I think for me too, now having finished the season, but then also with the Winchesters and, you know, its fate in the balance, but how certain things have happened in the storyline that now. I don't know, spoilers, like if you haven't watched the Winchesters, but we talked about it in other episodes too, you know, Dean's actively in that timeline now. And in my mind, what is that, what does that say about what Jensen thought really of the, Mm. the ending and how Dean, how Dean went out kind of thing? Do you feel like Maybe, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you're wrong, but do you feel like because we knew even before the episode aired that Jensen was not happy with the original script and he'd made some changes to it and he, I think he was quite vocal even before it aired that he'd fought for some things to be in there or to be taken out or whatever, that we all kind of had the idea that Jensen wasn't particularly happy with it. And because Jared hadn't said anything either way, Mm-hmm. He just appeared more positive by bent of I mean, it not could having be. anything bad yeah, to say. Yeah, it could be that too. I mean, I know that I think a lot of what a lot of what we did get before anything aired was just that it took Jensen more time to be okay with the mm. ending. And because I know, I know certainly that colored colored my expectations mm-hmm. of it. Mm-hmm. And outside outside of the uh, spoilers for 1520 i guess <laughs> <laughs> outside of the death scene in fact everything that happened after the death scene my sort of view of it was colored by the fact that 
it had taken that I knew that Jensen had had to really come to terms with it. Mm-hmm. But I, I suppose uh, Sandra has helpfully provided a table. She loves a table. We love a table. Um, so should we sort of like break it down by scene? Because then there's like I think certain things need yeah need more conversation than than others. And just I mean to start off too, like the more I was thinking about this episode, I almost felt like it was so disjointed to me. I I felt mm-hmm. like it if it was going to be almost like a true life after beating Chuck. I almost felt like the cold open needed to start with the villains and what was happening. So I almost felt like if they wanted to follow that the way they used to do it, which was just a cold open, you didn't see the boys. Like they would only do the cold open with the boys when it was really still the myth arc. And I felt like the myth arc was kind of like done. And now it was like, Mm. okay, but of course it's not what we got. But yeah, the cold open boys in the bunker, normal life. They start off with some feel good music. I know I enjoyed seeing those little slices that of life. Hug. I enjoyed seeing Dean Being with Miracle. Miracle. Seeing seeing what Sam was doing, Sam jogging, slower paced life, how it was treating them. Dean's, I feel like Dean was really enjoying things a lot more than maybe even Sam was. I felt like Sam was a little more uh, adrift, you know, like mm. they were different. Dean was more messy now. And I know we've seen Dean messy when stuff is not right with him. So does that mean he still really wasn't good with things either? Or was he just kind of like shifting into a different mindset? Sam seemed very neat, tidy. I've heard people talk about how it kind of was reminiscent of uh, the end of mystery spot where he was very like a drill sergeant, like, and like how he made his bed and like the different things he was doing that way when Dean wasn't there. Mm. One cute thing that I noticed was that uh, Dean had miracles food bowl Football's in his room at the end of the bed. And I guess in my mind, I was like, I don't know. I don't know how you do this, Carly. But like I had cafes, food bowls, like they were in the kitchen or they were like not necessarily like in the bedroom, right? Like they just weren't there. Mm -hmm. So to me, that automatically meant I was Dean's, it was Dean's puppy. Like, you know, like it it was Sam's too, but it was like Dean's baby. And she was, you know, he I, yeah. th- I think in the show Miracle was 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 boy. Yeah. Um I don't know that <laughs> I I be honest with say I never noticed that and I'm not gonna go back and fucking find out. Mm-hmm. Um that just strikes me strikes me as really odd because I'm like, but the food lives in the kitchen. Yeah. What are you doing? You yeah. taking the balls into the kitchen to fill them up. What? No, just keep the balls in the kitchen. So almost but like I maybe think- Miracle was like that was like Miracle's home base, like was might have yeah. been like Dean's room. Like, and that has a whole yeah, that's yeah. a whole connotation about like who's your favorite. Well, they had six. He could have, he could have, he could have filled up his water bowl there, and he depending on what he was feeding him, he could have kept the food in his room. So, because. yeah, I think that's 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 cute though. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I so do. it's like it was it was seeing that I enjoyed that, and I think the way they kept talking about it was, you know, fifteen nineteen was the season finale. Uh, 1520 was going to be the series finale, and I just remember Ted and I like at the end of when we first watched it. And 1519, just like, well, what are they going to do now? And I was just like, I don't know. And, you know, that should have I been had... a worry. Yeah. But I did not think that they were going to do it the way they did it, even if they were both do going what to. They did. Yeah. 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 I had the very same conversation with my husband, which was, well, now what? Mm-hmm. That it, it, it's finished. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah. What? Mm-hmm. What? And he was like, I don't know how they're going to move forward from this. And I was like, I also don't know how they're going to move forward from what. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One thing, one thing that I wanted to to pick up on is um, I read the Wikipedia page. I am mm-hmm. rewatching this episode for nobody. The Wikipedia page says that this episode takes place six months after 1519. But I thought we'd had it confirmed that it was like five years. I feel like this is just Jared's headcanon. I feel like I've heard Jared say this before, that he feels it was five years. But I don't know if it but was ever actually stated anywhere. Where's the six months come from? Because there was no citation mm. in Wikipedia. Mm-mm. I don't know. Where does where does the six six mm. months? Because it like literally that's how it starts. Six months after the events of the previous episode, Sam and Dean Winchester resumed yeah. their regular lives hunting monsters. It's not stated. It's not stated anywhere that I can tell. They don't particularly give you any good time frame the only reason i don't feel it's five years is just because 
they're still too not they're not really ground like I don't feel like they're really grounded yet like I would think after five years you wouldn't have the conversation that Sam has about he's still thinking about Jack and Cass like you know like so very in the moment yeah but he broods like things. nobody else yeah but again then for don't ruin this Dean, for me. I, well I don't know like to me the five don't years the me. five years to me is a cop out that gives Dean more time in my mind, without being specifically stated. I don't feel like it was five years. In my mind, I feel like it could have even just been a couple months. It wouldn't have necessarily been six months. So unless we have evidence yeah. somewhere as to what the time is, it's all up to interpretation, that wonderful thing that they like to throw at us. I don't mm. think it was that long. Uh, I I want to believe it was five <laughs> years yeah. because I hate, I like I think Jared, maybe Jensen, and a, a, lot, a lot of us, I hate the idea of them finally being free and not not getting to enjoy it. I hate the idea that the you know the final showdown and and fifteen nineteen ends and they're finally it's their life. Mm -hmm. No more Chuck, no more you know puppet master pulling the strings. This is what they're doing because they're doing it. No one's mm -hmm. behind the scenes, and I want them to have that. I want them to enjoy that. Yeah, but. Uh, it probably it just doesn't. It just doesn't. It probably was, yeah. It probably was. I I'm with you. As much as I want it to be, like I want it to be like ten years, fifteen years, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I would love that too, it but I just don't feel like was. it was only a few months. <laughs> yeah, because like yeah. Sam's st Sam still brooding. Mm -hmm. You know, he's still he's still sad about Cass and Jack and stuff. And it, I mean, I know he can brood for a long time, but there is a limit. Yeah. And if we do take into account that, you know, there are instances of Dean not being as good with his routine, right? Like that means that there's still a lot of stuff going on. And I feel like Dean's mm -hmm. able to push things down a lot quicker than Sam too. So I get your point about the brooding and how he could like brood for a really long time. But I still feel like they're they're both still going through it, you know, in a way. Like I, I think you get that mm -hmm. from. And I think. There's a couple of things that point to me that it's only been a very brief period of time. We've all speculated, and we will discuss this later on, um, Dean Jr.'s tattoo. Mm -hmm. Jack is God. Did he remove monsters from the world? Mm -hmm. Is the tattoo just a precaution? Are there still monsters? We mm -hmm. don't know. So it being... But we know immediately at the start there are still monsters. So has it only been a short time and Jack is still working mm -hmm. and redoing heaven and redoing everything? Mm -hmm. Or is it just the but, levels of monsters too? Like, are there mo more like lower level threat monsters, but not like, you know, the demon stuff happening later on? Like, you know, because I feel like at that point too, like yeah, maybe is reshifting things and changing things up to, yeah, you know. Maybe, maybe Sam and Dean would have just been taking care of you know the drags just the, the mm -hmm. last there's no there's no more alphas nobody's making anymore we're just cleaning up the mess because it seems but like what, they're actively searching to try to find mm -hmm. a case too like a lot more than maybe what they would usually be mm -hmm. doing like they didn't really find anything like things were quiet so that could have been soon after yeah. jack you know but i think it's been zoomed in on and analyzed a thousand and one times. I think we've all accepted it, it was a job application on Dean's mm -hmm. desk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would he wait five years? Yeah. Yeah. To, to you know, that was, he was, he was free and he was going to do what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And maybe what he wanted to do was to, to get a quote unquote real job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it probably probably wasn't that long. but i mean you know i hate this fucking episode <laughs> uh, and i actually like i mean we don't i don't have every single scene broken down so it's just like kind of like as as i get into it i'll just share mm -hmm. my thoughts too but like the scene after the cold open and then the supernatural screenshot the the title shot is the pie festival which is cute yes. um he finally got his pie he finally after got his so pie long. You know, Sam smushed it in his face. But I then again, like they they throw the you know they throw in the thing about Jack and Cass, and yeah, you know, I I just I feel like you know Dean's just putting up a good front about all of that too, and just like you know, well they'd want us to they'd want us to keep living, and that to me is just like setting again so many things that I'm just like I hate 
you're giving us this hope and then you just snatch it out. So yeah, it was, it was yeah. cute. It was nice. It was sunny. It was, you know, really kind of like it for, for Dina was enjoying the moment for him. It was like, you know, getting Sam to kind of, oh, come on, you know, stop being such a Eeyore, I think he calls him or whatever. And, you know, gets him, you know, he puts the <laughs> pie in, in Dean's face and all that, all that good stuff. So then yeah. the next scene is the family in the home invasion by the mass villains. And this is why when I rewatched it, I kind of thought, you know, it's just, I get what they were doing, but I almost felt like it might've been, it might've gotten people into a lulled sense of security if they'd done that first as the cold open and then kind of like, you know, trickled it in that way, the way they usually do with other things. But this is what they got. Mm -hmm. So like I, I they were so underwhelming. And then the fact that they paralleled right away the two boys, which I'll be honest, at first I was like, the kid had such long hair. I was like, is it a girl <laughs> and a boy? And then I was like, are they doing a Sam and Dean thing? Like, is this immediately like there's Sam with like the long hair, Dean, like mm-hmm. that kind of stuff? The the dad gets it right away. The mom gets, I think, her tongue cut out uh you find out about this later in the next scene where sam and dean come in at the crime scene dressed up as feds again they're they're bringing back Mm -hmm. all the things we're used to seeing like all the callbacks and like yeah you you like seeing the boys in in their fed suits and you know showing their badges and all that stuff and they get a little bit more information about what happened um at the house um, and then the next scene is uh, they're under the tree discussing the case uh, by they're you know, on top of Dean's got everything laid out on baby's hood. And they're talking about they find out that it was one of dad's old cases that didn't get tied up in a nice little bow. And I wrote this is when I should have started to know something was going to go horribly wrong because they inserted John into the narrative. Um, and there's a cute little Dean and his I, hybrid stuff. His, his aunt mimes. <laughs> <laughs> his vamp man's vamp ghoul mm-hmm. pious mm-hmm. um i get what they were trying to do that they made it come full circle because it was a, a a case of john's mm. that brought them back together and it's a case of john's that, that takes them takes them away from each other but honestly who's thought about john in like fucking years Mm-hmm. They got one episode for the 300th one, which was in season Mary, who's still alive. Mm-hmm. So, fuck, there was like 13, 14. When did Didn't they die? delete his name from the. There was an extended part of the scene in 1519 where they start talking about everybody, like once they've defeated Chuck and Jack's guy. Yeah, and, and back Dean, the does, Dean doesn't mention John um, because the John Winchester hate bot tweets that out a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but in the deleted scene. Because he doesn't call him dad. I think he calls him John, which I think was Mm -hmm. interesting too. Like, why wouldn't you call him dad? Uh, But again, all those reasonings. But yeah, no, nothing major about him since Lebanon. Who's who's thought about John in fucking however long? And like I said, I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. But like so many of the things in this episode, it was clumsy. Mm Mm-hmm. It was so like I mean, Supernatural's never been a particularly subtle show. It's always been shoveled to the face. But this was, oh, yeah, I was mad about that. Yeah, I was mad about that. But yeah, vamp mimes. We're into these <laughs> little hybrids, school pies, and vamp mimes. So I, I think fan service, right? Like they they were finding ways to bring certain things that we wanted to see. Um, yeah, but fucking John. Yeah, no, not that part, but I'm talking about right, like then. the little, yeah, like the fed stuff, yeah. the ba- right, baby, yeah, yeah, yeah. a nice scene of baby out in the sunlight, you know, the, mm-hmm. the composition and stuff. Yeah. Like, I feel like it's not a good episode unless you get a nice shot of baby. <laughs> I just feel like she's just going to get a nice shot of baby. Yeah. She's like the third on the call sheet. She's yeah. A, she's an important lady. Yeah. So the next scene is outside the house of the next potential victims by the vamp mimes. Uh, Dean lops off the head of one. Sam shoots the other one with a bullet soaked in dead man's blood. They interrogate and get details that the two kids are still alive, that they boosted. They are used for blood bags for years. I like that they did the good guy, bad guy thing with the vamp. You don't like those are things I I don't remember them doing for a while. And they got to do that, which I liked. 
that's the scene where the vampire goes, you're going to kill me anyway. And mm-hmm. Dean's like, yeah, but if you tell us what we want to know, you get this. And he's yeah. like a machete and Sam pulls out like a little, a little switchblade. Yeah. And yeah. it's something like if you, oh God, there was, there was another one. He was like, he's going to use a spoon or something. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, D- Dean threw that at the end, but like, you know, Sam was like, yeah, but if you go with this route, you know, it's, you know, you're going to feel every little, feel like every, every, every little every tendon, bit. every, every bit. Like, yeah. so I, I like that Sam was like the baddie. Like more like the bad, yeah. the bad option in that. I thought that was, yeah, I liked that. Was, that a it was lot. good. Yeah, it was. It was good. It fit. I don't know. It felt like they set everything up to go right. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to work perfectly in sync, and they're going to get all the information that they need, and they're going to save these kids. And it's oh my god, it's going to be this fucking absolute milk run of a hunt and it's gonna go great just so when the barn scene happens you're even more destroyed yeah by how you know it's like everything was going perfectly and then it just goes catastrophically wrong and you're like but hi yeah because if you're gonna follow a lot of the way the first season the first few seasons happened their monster of the week episodes would kind of always end with them driving off off to the next case and i think yeah in my mind i was like I think this is just what we're going to get. Like, this is, we're going to get established. This is what their life is like now. And leave it maybe open-ended, right? Because yep. everybody kept talking. You know, there's always a chance. That would be, that would be a good way to end it if they weren't going to follow up with all the other threads from previously that they really didn't take care of. It, there could always be another hunt. There could always be another case. We could always yeah. see them again. But no, next scene is um it's outside of the nest, the barn. I like this because they again the callback, they're they're by baby's trunk, they've got it open, they're they're going through the weapons, you're getting this whole this whole thing that you know we're we're used to seeing prepping for prepping for the, um the bad guys, getting all their all their weapons and things. And then there's the bit where Dean wants to use the throwing stars and Sam gives him a little bitch face. All really like nice. Like nice See, like, stuff. Before we, before we get to the bit that kills me, these cute little details. I'm like, oh, I want to go back and watch that now because I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I never noticed Miracle's dog balls being in Dean's room. I don't remember the bit with the throwing stars because oh, it no, all gets me, wiped me, away. Me. Because it all gets yeah, wiped away. Because they just fucking come in with the biggest of shovels, just pan you in the face with it, and then yeah. you're not thinking about anything else. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. So yeah. I think, and then this is where like things just turn. So we're in the barn. They find the two boys, tell them to run. And cause the vamps come in. Uh-huh. And I wrote, I guess this is where I should have known they were in trouble. Again, the fact that there are so many callbacks to old hunts and they bring back a character from another hunt in season one where John was involved. I did write, I thought that the fight scene was actually pretty good. I felt like they Again, we didn't, we it haven't was, seen them fight the baddies in a while to do like choreography and stuff that really they haven't done. I tell, I tell you what though, one of the stunt guys was Huge. fucking enormous. Yeah, he had to be for and that I, to be. Mm-hmm. I remember joking with my husband, like, which one of them is going to take him fucking down? Because mm-hmm. he was huge, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. absolutely huge, and yeah, I remember. I was so hopeful. I was going to mm-hmm. be like, shit, it's going to take both of them, and 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 then. Yeah. So, and then I think I, my other note was like, so to me, all the past stuff was time catching up with them. That's where I sort of got it from the second one. Next time I, it's like, you know, time's running out, you know, that's what it kind of felt like to me at that moment. Like time's running out, like stuff is past stuff keeps coming up. So like you were talking about that full circle, it's almost like we're reaching the end of their journey so to speak and that's what it ends up being for mm-hmm. dean you know what though did you ever watch game of thrones Hmm. okay so you know what spoilers for game of thrones if you haven't watched it <laughs> let's skip forward a bit so you know when they stab Jon snow at the end of whatever fucking season it is and they all mm-hmm. stab him and they go for the watch and mm-hmm. but they call him they get him to come out by telling him that his uncle is there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I remember at the time being like, nobody has thought about Benjamin Stark since season one. And it was mm-hmm. like, oh, like season like five or six, mm-hmm. maybe even seven. It was late, you know? Mm-hmm. 
nobody has thought about Benjamin, and that's what you're going to use. And the whole thing with John and that vamp, yeah, felt very similar. Mm-hmm. Like you could have picked any loose end mm-hmm. from recent years, and I get, yeah, like I get the full circle. And the da 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 da. We got work to do. Close the trunk. Blah blah blah. blah. I get it, but it felt really clumsy again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I just, I, I think it could yeah. have been, it could have been done differently and much better. Uh, you could have still given yeah. all those vibes and, and, and how, you know, and again, I don't know if this was a way for them to kind of like call back to the beginning of the season, which like feels like it was like millennia ago where like they, they were, the bad guys were coming back, coming back from the dead and they were having, they thought that was going to be their thing. They were going to have to take care of. And that got figured out by like the third, the third episode. And it's almost like this, that this theme happened again, you know? And it's like, and it was like, well, we're going to do this one more time, even though Chuck's not a part Mm -hmm. of things, we're still going to have this happen to them. So the next, do you know what though? Go ahead. Do you know what though? I'm not willing to give the writers of Supernatural this much credit. I know. I know. No, but it could be. It could be that they opted to have something that long ago f- with John because that was the last time Chuck wasn't actively meddling in mm. their lives. Mm-hmm. Like right before I'm the not prepared. started to be like this big thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I am not prepared to give Andrew Dabb that much credit, <laughs> but maybe. Yeah, you know, it's it's a good theory to kick about mm-hmm. in hindsight. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm 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 really massively trying to stall you from moving on to the next box. Well, I don't. <laughs> I I mean, I don't really think we're really going to talk about it all that much. Um, because it's it's just painful. So it's like just Dean and the rebar. Um, yeah. So that's yep. Yeah, when I so I kind of started watching this again. Like I was speeding through some of it the other day just to kind of take notes as to what the scenes were. And as soon as he was impaled, I was just like, I was done. I was just like, no, I'm not putting myself through this again. So I paused, I fast forward. But I remember I watched the scene about a month ago. This was like the full, full episode with Ted. And I was a complete mess. I think I was worse than, I was worse than the first time because I really, I feel like the first time there was too much shock to maybe. Well, I disagree. I cried for hours. <laughs> I assume I was, I was upset, but I feel like I was more upset because I got the chance to having sat with it for so much longer. And then the feelings just came up again and there was no, there's mm. no closure. I haven't had any closure for this for, since it happened, which is amazing to say, because we're talking over two years, I think for a lot of fans yeah. too, it's been a long time and no answers that we're getting or nothing that's really happening is kind of like making it feel like i get it it didn't you know it didn't need Mm -hmm. to happen Mm -hmm. it didn't they could have lived long life and i again it was always a theme throughout all of the seasons that sam couldn't have a normal life if dean was around Mm -hmm. So, you know, he didn't look for Dean in purgatory and he had a reasonable sense of normality with Amelia. But as soon as Dean came back, he dropped it all, didn't he? Mm-hmm. So I know, I know, I know that it was meant to be final, that Dean wasn't going to come back this time and that Sam would now be able to leave the life and go have a family and, you know, an apple pie life with a white picket fence and whatever. But it didn't, it didn't need to be that way. One thing I remember too, watching it, I just, and I, I know these were, again, like I, I know there were tweaks and things between Jensen and Jared, but there's the one moment when Dean is so mad that he got impaled that he like growls at how angry he is. And I think it's like, that's at that, that's before he goes into this whole acceptance bullshit of like, this is his how it has to end. Yeah. Um, there's anger. And I really feel like that's Jensen. <laughs> I really feel Quite like that possibly. was Jensen, you know, just being so angry. Um, because we know how much 
he cares about Dean, like in a way that's like mm-hmm. very much like beyond, I think, any fan uh, when you live with a character that long. Same thing, I'm sure, for oh, yeah. Jared with Sam. You know, yeah, you care about these characters. And I just know, you just know in your gut, like he's never wanted this for Dean mm-hmm. any more than any of the fans have. They want, they, I think he wanted Dean to feel differently about himself too, you know, and learn that he was, Mm. he was this hero. Um, so to go out like this, and again, like, I just remember watching it the first time and Ted was like, um, Ted saw it. Ted saw the rebar, Ted, Ted clocked the rebar before I did, even though it was right there front and center. And they, they made that a focus, you know, right before. And Ted was like, I don't think I clocked it. I don't think I clocked it until he, he was impaled on it. Ted was like, Oh no. And I'm like, I just remember going, what, what is it? He's like, he didn't say anything. But then when he went back, I was like, he was like, yeah, he's like, that's what I thought was going to happen. And I was just like, no. And that was all that. So yeah, the, I, I, I know they, they, I I think it's beautiful acting by both Jensen, Jared. It's, it is a heart tugging scene. It makes me cry over and over and over again, how much Dean didn't think Sam was good. Sam was just going to tell him, you know, to kick rocks or whatever. And like to know that they were bringing that back from the very first episode. It's, it's a lot, you know, and that Sam had to let him go, had to be the one to do that. It just says so much about their relationship, but it so wasn't necessary. It just wasn't necessary. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. And we can, there's, I, I remember, I remember like, pausing the episode when Dean got impaled and being like, oh, and I was driving my husband fucking mad at that mm-hmm. point because we mm-hmm. watched all of the episodes of season 15 live, quote unquote, like when they mm-hmm. came up on CW the day after. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, he was fucking done with me, but he was like, he kept pausing it and being like, oh, this, and oh, this. And I paused it and I was like, oh, and he was like, let's just fucking watch. Mm-hmm. And when Sam's like, wait there, I'll, I'll go get the medical supplies. And he goes, no, this this is it for me. That is about the time when I started to bawl mm. and started mm-hmm. to just mutter, it wasn't supposed to be like this, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. continued for about, the crying continued for about three hours. Yeah. Um, that it wasn't supposed to be like this continued up until, up until the end of the episode, really. Yeah. Because yeah. it just, I understand all the things they were trying to say but you know what makes me mad about it? Why didn't Dean get a chance to have the life he wanted? Mm-hmm. He was like, as I say, we we know now it's been analyzed to death. He was applying for a job. But the idea that, that only Sam was worthy of having the life that he wanted, that he chose, and that Dean, Dean had to die for that mm-hmm. really pisses me off because I'm like, yeah, maybe, maybe they, maybe they would have stayed hunting. I don't think they would have done though. Dean, you know, was trying to trying to change things up. But I'm just like, Dean deserved a happy ending, just as much as Sam did. Yeah, which is more reason why I think it couldn't have been five years. Like, I I think that they would have, they might have still been at the bunker, but like stuff would have. I feel that that would have been time for Dean to have a different viewpoint. You know what I mean? Like, there's still, it was still too fresh, I feel like, mm-hmm. for this. So, again, that's why he didn't get that, didn't get that opportunity mm-hmm. to feel I, differently about himself. There wasn't time. Yeah. So, I suppose on the, on the back of that, and the, I mean, it, it breaks my heart, and I never, I, I genuinely never want to watch it again. Mm-hmm. But it was some of the best acting I think Jared and Jensen have ever done. Yeah. And when you hear them talk about it now, mm. especially Jensen, who, like I said, it seems to have, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but I seem to have seen more clips of him from recent cons talking about it and saying, you know, that they they've made this arc. And if you don't watch the last bit, you're depriving yourself of of the story that they've told. And I I I totally get it. Mm-hmm. And I remember I remember around the time it aired, both of them talking about, you know, trying to uh, Jared especially 
um, trying not to cry Sam's tears, you know, and to keep it, keep it for on camera. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a change that Jensen, Jensen made to the script. I think he was supposed to call Sam my brother. um, And he calls him my, my little brother, some, something like that. I think he says my little baby brother. I think he says, yeah, he puts baby in there too. It might be my, it might be my baby brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously, it's it's that 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 particular sort of phrase is a, is a bit of a callback to, you know, th- when he lost Sam and he thought he'd lost him for good at the end of season two with the you know that's my job to look after my pain in the ass little brother, mm-hmm. um, and it's <laughs> it's a really it is a really beautiful scene, but I can never. I can never shake the fact that I know that Jensen was mad about it. Mm-hmm. And I know that he had to fight with people to be like, Dean dies on his fucking feet. Because mm-hmm. I definitely, I've seen a clip of that recently. I don't know if it's from a recent con, but he took that to whoever you take that to. And they were like, oh, we're going to have to change all the camera angles and it's going to mm-hmm. be this. And he was like, I don't care. Mm-hmm. He dies on his feet. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so I think I know they're both proud of it, and I'm proud of them. Mm-hmm. But I hate it so yeah. much. Yeah, and not not just not just because it's sad, and it's gut wrenching, and it's you know it's it's all those things, but just because it didn't it didn't need to happen. Yeah, I'm mad. I'm mad on Jensen's behalf that he had to fight. You know that he struggled so much with with Dean dying. And then having to fight for Dean to die the right way, mm-hmm. and then I'm mad on Dean's behalf because why didn't he? Why why wasn't he worthy of a happy ending? And then I'm yeah. mad on Sam's behalf because I just don't believe he would have let him go. Mm-hmm. I know I, I'm pretty sure Dean told him like Dean don't don't try yeah. and bring me back or yeah. something. Yeah. But when has that ever stuck? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. I also, and I've, I've heard people discuss this too a little bit where, you know, it's like, oh, well, they didn't have the armor. They didn't have the Chuck armor anymore. And so that's why just something, you know, like that was going to happen. And I just, I just refuse to believe that they, throughout the 15 seasons that they aren't, they aren't the hunters that, that we believe that they are. Yeah. Stuff's going to happen, but stuff's happened to them before and they've, they found a way. So it's kind of like, giving up yeah i don't i don't i don't buy that for a second yeah yeah so there's that there's like I this remember... feeling of giving up and i understand but it's sacrificial again and i just like yeah yeah it, dean just didn't dean, didn't dean deserved better hashtag dean deserved better yeah um yeah. i remember who the fuck was it it was it was one of them it might it might have been jensen actually a, like a while ago mm-hmm. before season 15 saying it would have to be something stupid Mm-hmm. That took them out because they'd fought and defeated all of the big bads. Mm-hmm. So it would have to, you know, it couldn't be like, ah, oh, you've defeated God. Now you have to defeat bigger God, you know? Yeah. It would have yeah. to be, has to be an accident. It would have to be, you know, mm-hmm. some low level, something getting the jump on them or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do agree with that, but I don't think it's anything to do with, with Chuck yeah. or Armor or yeah. anything else because they weren't. They weren't stupid. Mm-hmm. They were good hunters, mm-hmm. and I don't think you could say fifteen years was was Chuck armor. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So, so that's all that to say. We're, we're both we're both sad now, so we're gonna yeah. move on. <laughs> so I don't know how much sad we want to get with the fallout of like Sam going through the bunker with the dog, and you know all of that stuff that's also very no, we're going to gloss right the fuck over that right, right over that. the fuck so, over it so and the end up being the phone call that has sam leave the bunker on a case which you know apparently seems like it's for good right like he's 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 moving on um yeah and then uh i i think i put something in what did i do oh okay about so, dean's legs yes so just <laughs> as a light in the mood i actually looked at the wrapped up body on top of the funeral pyre and I feel like has the straightest and narrowest legs from thigh to feet. So I refuse to believe that that's Dean with his bow legs. I, I don't, I don't know. know though. Maybe because they wrapped Misha up. But when Dean 
I know. Um, I just feel all like all there's still be a little like Jensen. <laughs> Jensen punches him in the dick. But they wrapped Misha up for that. Although you saw Misha's foot, like you saw his body was as Dean was wrapping mm-hmm. him up. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why would why wouldn't they wrap Jensen? Up? I, I just feel like it was body. too narrow. I just felt like the, even the thighs were too narrow. Like to me, just it just if you're gonna if you're gonna do a fake body, have it like <laughs> Dean's body. I, and it occurred to me body. that they didn't they didn't wrap Jensen up because they lit everything on fire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can kill one of your lead actors for a scene. Um, but yeah, like the man has a very distinctive silhouette. Yeah, but miss so me the- with that thigh touching shit. So that was that was a little I, when I when I looked yeah. at that I was like let me pause this again and look at like mm, I don't that's not Dean just it's not Dean so yeah, I refuse to think that that was Dean over there so you've got you've got a question here is this related to the montage part no it's it's because we didn't really yeah, yeah. predictably <laughs> you only focused on Dean's side <laughs> of the last half of the episode. <laughs> So no, like, no, no, no. This. No, the montage. So I feel like so montage of Dean oh, driving shit, through no, heaven right there. and Sam's shit, life no, after right death. There. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I will move that down to its appropriate its appropriate section. I didn't see that. I saw Dean in my eyes glazing. So I wasn't I'm sure like, oh, something if something had oh, like Dean. happened then. Okay. So no, 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 no. Um, Dean in heaven. Dean in heaven meets Bobby outside of Harvell's. I did like seeing our Bobby. Um, I did. So. Yeah. There's mention of Jack now having an open heaven. We learn that Cass is no longer in the empty and helped Jack rebuild. That's all we get about Cass, Slate's mark, and a ha from Dean. Uh, Bobby says this heaven is the heaven Dean deserves right after he mentions his mom and dad are together and just down the road. And I just wrote grr because I'm just like, again, why are we, we mentioning? This is not Dean's heaven. He doesn't deserve this. <laughs> we have talked about this extensively before. John fucking Winchester got into heaven. Did he really? Did he fucking really? I don't think he did. No, wait. No, he didn't. Whose soul did they free? Bobby's. Bobby was in hell. And Bobby saw... No, John escaped the devil's gate. I I don't care. I don't care about semantics about this. That man was a bastard and an abusive alcoholic. He would... No! I don't... I think of all the things, of all the people to reference, I appreciate, like, they were outside Harvell's, outside the Roadhouse. Mm-hmm. So you would assume that Ash and Ellen and Joe mm-hmm. were in there. Mm-hmm. But I feel like instead of Bobby saying, oh, you you, you know, your mum and dad are up the road. Like, he, he mentions Rufus, which is great. And I think, you know, he there are more deserving people that we lost, like, Tell me Charlie's there. Yeah. You know, yeah. tell me that you've you've caught up. You know, t- tell me that you and Ellen finally got together. Tell me that Ash is fucking doing string theory in this heaven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Whatever. There are there are people that were lost mm-hmm. that were far more meaningful than John and Mary Winchester. And that always that always always pissed me off. Yeah, and Always. I know that they've been saying that if it hadn't been COVID, that the the way it was supposed to end was actually like a big party in Harvell's. And, and Kansas was going to be every, there. And you would have seen everybody, you know, lots of yeah. familiar faces. And that's all fine, well, and good. But like to to single out mentioning John, I just... Mm-hmm. And, and I, I mean... Kind again, of Mary as well. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Even if Jack, like even if Jack thought this is what, this is what heaven's like. I would have think Cass would have had some say in, well, you know, like, especially about John. Like, I just feel like Cass would have been like, mm, you know, maybe we, maybe we have a think. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what though? You know, you know what though? Whatever we think about John, he, he always respected his dad. And I think probably the intention was to reassure Dean mm-hmm. that, because Dean's been to hell, that his dad wasn't still in hell, mm-hmm. and obviously we didn't. Mary exploded. <laughs> that was great. That was such a good episode. <laughs> but they they were so busy with all the other shit that was going on that they never had time to be like, "Oh shit, would mom have gone to gone to heaven?" Yeah. You know. So yeah. maybe that kind of kind of reassurance that like they're here. Don't worry. Yeah. But from a fan perspective, 
tell me about other people you know yeah it's not it's not relevant to Dean but you know tell me Jess is there Mm -hmm. tell me Charlie's there Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. all these people that were I keep saying all these people I just keep repeating Charlie because yeah I've fucking she didn't need to die god damn it yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Missouri Missouri Mosley like you just mentioned Pamela yeah Pamela as well you know people that influenced the boys lives and helped them and you know I feel like that that should Which, have, that those lines could have been put in because there was a lot of empty space. So there was a lot of dead air. To me, then, does this necessarily mean that because they don't mention Jody, they don't mention Donna? So are we to assume that then they were brought back? I think they're alive. The that they're alive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think everybody who wasn't my personal headcanon is that everybody who wasn't already dead. Mm-hmm was brought back so um jody and the girls donna um other people so you mean eileen if they didn't bother mentioning you know we would hope well, eileen you know we're gonna get onto that get onto that in a little bit so yeah then there's another just there's another sweet line where um you know dean's like well it's almost perfect and you know bobby's like he'll be along and which is so, my my soul yeah yeah. So, and I, I, I'm sorry. I was so glad the baby was there. Everybody's like, it's so cheesy. Yeah. Baby made it to heaven. I'm like, well, why? Oh, do you she? know what? <laughs> do you know what? When like the kind of the promos and stuff, and especially after the season ad, and like big Castiel fans, and more specifically Destiel fans, which mm-hmm. is not my ship, but we ship and let ship. Yeah. Were big mad that mm-hmm. the car was. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I do get that because like again, like there's just like this one he's given one line, right? Like, and this is where it like it almost it almost makes things tier level again as to who's more important in do you know what though? Dean's life. And I like the fact that John was given this special thing and like one thing about Cass, and that was it. Mm. It's irritating. Yeah. It's interesting though. I found out um recently and this is all i've never heard of this from i personally have never heard this directly from jensen or misha or jared Mm -hmm. even or anybody else Mm -hmm. but hearsay around (laughs) around the twitter fountain is that jensen didn't know cass was going to declare his love until they came to film it so misha had worked it out with the writers and the directors and everybody knew apart from Jensen who was utterly blindsided by this this declaration is this verified as well I don't know it's just but I've heard it more than once from different people Mm. but I've I've not heard anybody who would know that you know Misha's never said it Jensen's never said it Jared's not said it. I don't know where this information is coming from. Yeah. But people are saying. So if that's true, I and don't I don't know, know if it yeah. if it is, is it possible? Because obviously Misha didn't didn't come back for the last two. Mm-hmm. Is it possible that Jensen didn't want a reference to Cass? Didn't want to, you know, talk about it, didn't want we don't know. I, don't I just know. feel like that gives me too can... much, too much control over this, over the narrative as to what's happening. And I just feel like Jensen and Jared would. But if they didn't know, Jared Jensen's a professional. If he only finds out about this a couple of days beforehand, yeah, he's going to throw a tantrum and and cancel the whole shoot. No, he's not. Mm-hmm. He's going to be pissed, mm-hmm. and he's going to show that in his acting choices, which was what, mm. you know. There was mm-hmm. no, there was no ambiguity on what Dean might have meant when he looked at him and said nothing, yeah. you know. Yeah. And since then, Jensen's come out and been like, Dean did not love Castiel in that way. Mm-hmm. That was not. I mean, it took him a minute, mm-hmm. but you know, he's he's come out and and said that that was it wasn't that for Dean. Mm-hmm. So. And like I said, this is complete, complete rumors around the water, water fountain, water yeah. cooler, whatever. But if that is so, and then obviously that's the last thing they filmed before they went on hiatus. Jensen's mm-hmm. got a while to stew on that. 
-hmm. he's got a while to be pissed Mm -hmm. and he comes back and I think it was decided that was always going to be Misha's final scene he wasn't coming back anyway I don't think Mm -hmm. so it's not it's not beyond the realms of possibility for Jensen to just be like just don't I don't don't even talk about him I don't even want it mentioned you know yeah, it's interesting that's a script, too, though. that's a script edit yeah. that's not too difficult. So in 19, I mean, uh, 1519, there's a couple mentions of Cass. And then there's the scene where Lucifer pretends to be Cass. And you see mm. you see Dean, you know, dropping and running and whatever. However that, whatever that means. Like, you know, you can interpret that, whatever. You know, like, just, like, not even, like, stopping, like, going to, like, let him in. And so, like, what, mm-hmm. you know. So again, I, I don't know. I it, it that would be definitely interesting that, if if that's that that's was accurate. That was also a weird choice. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the last two episodes, nineteen and twenty, were filmed about four months. They wrapped in March mm-hmm. when pretty much everywhere went into lockdown, and I think they came back in like August. I think August yeah. for the last two. Mm-hmm. And then they aired in the 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 second half of the season aired October to November, didn't it? Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm not willing to give them any fucking any grace on COVID because they chose to come back that quickly. I mean, yeah, at the time, back in 2020, we didn't know mm-hmm. what was going to happen. Mm-hmm. We didn't. And I don't know how much money it was potentially costing CW or whatever mm-hmm. to keep any permanent sets that they might have had in Vancouver or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But it's not like they're short on cash, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, the industry was suffering everywhere. Yeah. And we would have waited. It was like, we, you know, we were like, no, supernatural, fuck. Mm-hmm. But everything was locked down. We would have waited if they'd have come back to it the following year, you know, when we had a bit more of a handle on the pandemic and everything that was happening. And if they they could have waited another six months and had more people. Do you think that had a lot to do with Jensen and Jared too? Like, I mean, I'm sure at some point, like, they just wanted to, like, put a lid on everything and be like, we've got to get this back. And I know Jared was you know, getting ready to do Walker. And I think like things were starting to like get um, into place Jensen for went, Jensen. Jensen went up to Toronto in, um, I think it was like February mm-hmm. of 21 mm-hmm. to um, start filming for the boys. So yes, there were time limits mm-hmm. on these things, but I'm just like, you could have waited a little bit longer and then you picked really weird arbitrary characters to come back. Yeah. Yeah. Mark Pellegrino was Lucifer. Who's thought about him in forever? But he came back. Yeah. But that's why that's again like the co-writers of that episode are are Lucifer writers. So you should have known that he was going to come back because of that. Like the Ross Lemming Buck Lemming. But isn't that isn't that stupid though? Yeah. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Is isn't that stupid? And I'm like. I don't know if Misha had other stuff going on that meant he couldn't come back. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wouldn't have made sense for him to come back, really. He was supposed to be in the MC, so yeah. But, like, you've got this whole suite of characters but, that you can pick from. Yeah, like, so that's the thing, Why too. Lucifer? Like, so God God was able... Like, was it God or was it death? I'm so confused. Because, again, 1519 is also was, just a shit show. Oh, Who brought Lucifer back? Billy. Okay. No, um, no. no, it was... God. No, it was, it was Chuck, right? Chuck brought Lucifer back because then it was like the, it was. Oh, didn't he, he want the book? He wanted the. He book. wanted Billy's book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, but that was it. Lucifer came at came with a wholly different like mo like scenario, but then it was like, oh, Dad brought me back for this. So I'm like, yeah. okay, so you can bring somebody back from the empty if you want to. Like, so it, it, it's obvious, like you know. Yeah, it's possible, but I mean, like. Chuck wasn't going to bring Castiel back, no. was he? That no, was, he wasn't. He no. only brought Lucifer back for his own his own gain, which is, you know, that's fine. But I'm like, I'm just not willing to give it was COVID mm-hmm. as a pass for these last two episodes because, yeah, it was COVID, but you had an additional four months then to tweak the scripts, to do this, to do that. 
you had an additional four months you weren't expecting Mm -hmm. where you could have called anybody in changed the script whatever and you still went with lucifer yeah like you could have had you know with that kind of timeline they could have had ellen and joe be with Mm -hmm. bobby Mm -hmm. in the you know i mean yeah there were there were set restrictions and things like that but they could have just just been hanging outside whatever yeah but i know all those people they had all those random extras that were like in 1519 just wandering about and stuff and i'm like how did that, how was that okay? How did you make that okay? <laughs> I, re- I remember, I remember Samantha Ferris, I'm sure it's Ferris, said that they were, she was never even asked mm-hmm. to come back. Mm-hmm. So they had, they planned to have, they still planned to have the roadhouse. Mm-hmm. And yeah, okay, they couldn't have the big party and everything else. They still planned to have the roadhouse, but without Ellen? Yeah. Question mark? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's yeah. It's I'm just... not. I'm not. I'm not willing to give COVID a pass mm-hmm. because the last two episodes were a mess, story wise. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. 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 And they had. And again, I will keep harping on about this. They had an additional four months to figure it out. <laughs> you know, they could have been like, "All right, well, um, we can't have everybody, so mm-hmm. let's be real fucking careful about who we do have." Mm-hmm. And who's going to be in the finale, you know, yeah. and that we've got all this planned out and, and Bobby's going to be there and we could have Charlie be there or, you know, Ellen and Joe. I mm-hmm. think seeing Ellen and Joe in heaven, I mean, yeah, that would have been a hell of a callback. Mm-hmm. But I think that probably would have meant a lot to Dean. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you can infer like he's he's at the roadhouse. He knows that they're there. But yeah. I just think having them there would have been nice. Yeah. Yeah, same. yeah, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. He'll be he'll be along. That will, oh, my yeah. soul, my soul. So then we get the <laughs> lovely montage of Dean driving through heaven and Sam's life after Dean, after all of the carry on stuff, and they get Dean gets going. So yeah, I also until you pointed it <laughs> out hadn't noticed that this is the only season finale that didn't start with carry on. Yeah. I didn't get that. I didn't clock it at all. Like, you know, it's like one of those things you always wait for. Like, you're, it's going to have that song and they're going to do Did 19 montage. start? Mm-mm. Did 19 start with Carry On, though? Nope. No? Nope. Oh, shit. We were all so tense. We knew something awful was going to happen. <laughs> we were all like, yeah, we're never paying attention to the music. Fuck it. Like, okay, they couldn't. They, they had to use every moment that they could. So they couldn't even put like, <laughs> like a little Carry On at the beginning of the road so far or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. They didn't yeah. even have a road. Did they have a road so far in no. 19? No. They, they just did, did, yeah, they they just did like the previously, but they didn't do anything with music. I don't think so. Now I'm going to look, but I'm pretty sure they did not. Because usually there's always a big to do with the song. And and I do not I do not remember that at all in 1519. No. no, they just do a recap like they were doing. There's no There's no music. It's just like then like how they usually do um mm-hmm. there's no there's no carry on the road the road so far thing okay um, yeah so then we move on to um the montage that has so many things wrong with it the montage that's just a fucking mess so dean's driving through heaven i don't think he's, he's not doing anything other than just driving he's just driving down which just driving. so does that have something to do with the Winchester? <laughs> god let's not let's not if it does it wasn't fucking planned that way no it went no, like oh let's set this up for let's set this absolutely up for a not absolutely not. no sam's life post post dean with the magical blurry wife mm-hmm. why didn't they just say why didn't i don't understand why that was kept a secret i find that really strange mm-hmm. um my head kind of is is that it's eileen mm-hmm. um it could be that the blurry wife has has um you know long brown hair it, mm-hmm. it could definitely be eileen don't understand why they didn't tell us um and then we have dean jr and he puts his name on his dungarees and i've definitely talked about this <laughs> yes, that, is how you lose a child. <laughs> that is how you lose a child don't do that <laughs> don't advertise your child's name like that yeah. it's yeah. like they say don't put don't put like your dog's name on their collar just put your information because if someone knows your dog's name mm-hmm. then they 
it, in theory can summon it. So yeah, don't don't do that. The actual the, <laughs> as Dear Junior gets older. I'm kind of, you know, I like it. I like the the scenes that you see with with him, like you know, doing his homework with him mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And if it wasn't for that fucking wig, oh my god, that fucking wig! Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for the dark brown wig, I actually quite like the scene of Sam getting getting into baby because you can tell he's he's getting older yeah. and it's you know like his body is, is sore and it's hurting. And it hurts him to get get in there, and I I just like, like the idea that she's this this frozen in time mm-hmm. moment, mm-hmm. and he's life going on. Yeah, and that I like that. I like it, and I like the idea that he still goes there for comfort, and he still, you know, I I, I like that. I just I felt do. they could have filmed it differently. They could have if if you don't have not the put budget, that fucking thing on his edge. If you don't have the budget for a good wig, then you've got you know I am, you've got ways am, that you could film it where you don't have to like zoom in on the fact that he opens up the door it's a sunny day and you see this god forsaken wig on top of his head like it could have been filmed I am, differently it was awful i am genuinely genuinely convinced that was a prank i can't it can't not have been but it's but so if it was i feel like they would have told us by now it's a hor- Jared, it's a horrible prank for everybody because so, it takes you totally out of the fact that this in no way looks it doesn't like look like Sam. an old Sam. Yeah. It just looks like Sam with a wig on his head. Like, <laughs> there's other ways you can make someone look older. They could have done stuff to his sh- hair that they didn't yeah. have to do. That's that's the thing. Throughout the seasons, one of the one of the big signs that Sam is not okay is that his hair gets greasy. Mm-hmm. He takes really good fucking care of it, and what suddenly he's just gonna go wild and stop brushing? Oh, fucking wig! I hate it. Yeah, hate it, just, it, hate it was just bad. It. it was just bad. It, it ruined bad. what could have been a really great scene. It really did. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then we have Sam's death scene. Um, that wig wasn't quite as bad. <laughs> that wig no, wasn't quite I think as it's bad. just because he was laying down too, and it's just like you know, it was just it. It, it looked looked more appropriate um yeah in that way i love i love i love the scene with with dean jr though and the the you know the fact that he's there mm-hmm. and i think that's if we talk about the first half of carry on being about things coming full circle mm-hmm. the second half is about sam breaking that cycle the mm-hmm. cycles of a abuse and the cycles of the life and everything else and he's his kids there with him when he dies he's a good dad and i like that and a a thing that i never clocked but you clocked and various other people clocked he's wearing dean's watch Mm -hmm. in the Mm -hmm. in his not the final scene but in in his death scene yeah yeah now wikipedia says because we see Dean Jr. has a tattoo. He reaches his hand mm-hmm. out to grab his dad's hand. Do they exchange words or do they... Is it the silent? only thing that Dean Jr. says, it's okay, Dad, you can go now. I thought that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, I was still bawling from Dean, mm-hmm. real Dean's death. Mm-hmm. So this didn't even, like... If, if it had been a different episode, if someone died in a different episode, I would have been fetal. <laughs> I would have been a fucking hot mess. But I was still reeling from all the everything that I didn't have enough emotional bandwidth to process this. But we see that we see that Dean Jr. has got the tattoo. Now Wikipedia says that this means that Dean Jr. that Sam has raised, what does it say? As he grows older and his health deteriorates, he's visited by Dean Jr., who is shown to have become a hunter as well before Sam dies peacefully of natural causes. No, he isn't. That's creative. He has that's tattoo. creative. That's just creative like interpretation. It does you don't know why he's got the tattoo. Like you in my mind I he's can, got the tattoo to protect himself from the possibility. Like that's it. He yeah. could have got the tattoo as a matching tattoo with his dad. He might not even know what it means. It could just be like mm-hmm. a like a legacy thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Like a, a Yeah, we do don't that, know. Sure. We don't have any more information just that he has a tattoo on him. Yeah. So I choose to reject that person who wrote this Wikipedia article. <laughs> I'm choosing not to acknowledge that. Um because um, I think I think Sam would have asked him to get the tattoo, even if Sam knew mm. that there were no more monsters, there were no more demons. 
I don't think he would have taken that risk. Do you think he might have just like lied about it and said, "Oh, come on, get a tattoo like your old man or whatever"? Or like you know, it's a no. I think I think I think he probably told okay told his son about what used to be out there because he'd have to tell him about that, his brother, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think he would have. I don't know whether he would have gone into into incredible detail about you know like literally fighting God mm-hmm. or whatever, but I think he would have told told Dean Jr. what used to be out there and asked him to just just do this, just 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 to set my mind at rest. Just in case. You know? Yeah. Just in case. Like it's been quiet like for like 18 years and longer now if we assume that he was 18 when he got the tattoo or whatever. Mm-hmm. But just just for my peace of mind. Yeah. Just just get this tattoo. You know, like you can hide it. You don't have to have it anywhere obvious. Just just for me, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I I reject that that Sa- uh, Dean Junior is a hunter. There's one weird thing that other people have mentioned too is that in Sam's house there's that portrait, the picture of above the fireplace of John Mary, Sam and Dean, which is mm-hmm. clearly taken around the Lebanon episode, and it's them, you know, having they're together in this picture and people can say, Oh, well, you know, they could have used one of their phones and timed it or whatever, but that technically is not supposed to exist in this timeline. That stuff all got erased. So Mm -hmm. people have like pointed that out too. Why is there a photo that shouldn't exist in this montage scenario? So I think Jessica had mentioned when we had her on that a lot of people think that maybe what we're seeing is what Dean thinks Sam's life would have been like the scenario Mm. that way. Um, So that's a theory also that's out there. It's just, there's so many like little things that I feel like you guys should know not to like, I could see the other pictures, right? Like the other pictures of when they were younger and even like the pictures um, of them, even when Sam was a baby in front of the house, those kinds of things, like that kind of stuff. I could see there being pictures of of Sam and Dean as well, right? With until. Mary, right? Yeah, but not with John. Yeah, they could have taken some taken some with Mary, and even mm-hmm. right up until right up until the you know the end for Dean, they would have. I feel like I feel like Sam would have would have wanted mm-hmm. wanted pictures like that. Mm-hmm. Would have wanted something to hold on to, but yeah, but that's just weird. It's just a weird thing that they they stuck in there that doesn't yeah. make sense. Didn't even so. clock it to be honest, mate. Yeah. yeah. But then we've got, we get to the final scene, which is, I mean, it's really nice. It is. I mean, it's. Doesn't even, doesn't even, you know, we don't even have to see Sam. We're just, hey, Mm Sammy. And you just, and the look on Jensen's face. That's not a Dean face. Yeah. It's, that's every bit of that is Jensen for Jared. I Mm -hmm. love it. I love Mm -hmm. the fact that they've tried to recreate Sam's clothes from Tyler's. Yeah. It looks dreadful. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. Same thing with uh, Jensen, like the same color scheme, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But I do, I do like the fact that they, you know, they, they tried, tried to bring it full circle and and the, they tried (laughs) hair and makeup, costume design guys could have done maybe a little bit. Attempt. yeah attempts attempts were made but it was yeah it's nice and then they they hug if they ended it before they zoomed out on that bridge Mm -hmm. i think it would have been really nice you know what ted always tells me is like the drone when it when it takes off there's like a plume of like dust on the bridge and like that's all i can see now when they like when when they (laughs) pan back he's like oh look look at the little like dust cloud he's like that's the drone that did that i'm like thank you ted Like you said, you have told me this four times now. I'm very well aware that it was the drone that did that. But I just, I it of all the places to break the fourth wall in that show, yeah, just, that's really weird. Yeah, that at the very I end they think, thank they thank the fans too, like that 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 like I I, I get like it. It should have it should have gone. Hey, Sammy, hug, credits. Mm-hmm. You know, fade to black, whatever start of the credits whatever and then go back in for the drone shot with all the the crew and jared and jensen thanking the fans like it shouldn't there should have been a definite yeah mark of delineation between 
this is the end of the episode and this is us yeah. thanking you yeah it was weird it was just weird it was it was weird and there were so many people on that bridge that didn't have masks on <laughs> And this was, bear in mind, this was still 2020. We, this was like... This was before the vaccine. Yeah. yeah, this was, we were not even six months into the pandemic mm-hmm. at this point. Mm-hmm. We were still peak, holy shit, what is happening? Yeah. And these motherfuckers are out here cutting about without masks on. Oh yeah. no, I want to get my face in the ending of Super. <laughs> Shut up. What's a mask on, you fanny? So all that to say, it could have been so much more than it was. Yeah. But Do you think we would have ever been satisfied? That's a question I always come up with. Would I ever be with, satisfied with the ending? Not if Dean died. No. Yeah. No. That was no. So. That's that's the big thing, and it's not it. It's not even like oh my god, Dean. You know, like it is for you. <laughs> You're like no, <laughs> Dean. Fuck. It's not like that for me. It's not like that for me. It's just there's no. It was wrong. Mm-hmm. Very to the core of everything. Yeah. That Dean had to die because only Sam was worthy of a life. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. If I, it's dark, it's dark, okay? But if Dean had decided post Chuck that he was done with this shit and he offed himself, I would have been more all right with that than I was with this because that would have been a choice by Dean to go, I'm never going to get out of this hole i'm never gonna have a life i don't know how to be anything other than a hunter and sam can be better without me do you think it gets back to the how we talk about again and again how much dean really isn't just his brother but it's also like his his parent Mm -hmm. and maybe that's how like, that's how he's willing to be, like... Because I just remember, like, even in the end of season eight, when Sam's gonna, you know, the trials and everything, and, you know, Dean says, there ain't no me if there ain't no you, right? So it's just, like, mm-hmm. I I feel like it's almost at a... It's at a parental level with yeah. Dean, too, and, like, the sacrifices he's willing to make for Sam. I still don't like it, and I still don't think it should have happened like that. But it's, like, I guess it's me just trying... I would, yeah, anything... It's either the boys Anything going out together, Dean. either the boys going out together, yeah. or and both you know, getting a chance. Yeah, that it, it yeah. doesn't work that way. And I think I think we can, as you said, nobody knows Sam and Dean better than Jared and Jensen. And the fact that Dean, not Dean, the fact that Jensen struggled with that ending mm-hmm. and really had to like had to phone Kripkin, be like, dude, what the fuck. Why? Have you, what is this? Even yeah. though well, I don't even think Kripke was involved in Supernatural at that point. No, just the, I think like, you know, the originator, like he had a credit, yeah. a producer credit title on it, but, you know, wasn't making any of the big decisions anymore. And I think he had to kind of like spin it for Jensen to be okay yeah, he with did. it. Yeah. He did. I remember Jensen saying that he'd have to phone, phone mm-hmm. Eric and be like, I don't, what well, I, can't, I, I can't reconcile this. What is this? Mm-hmm. So I think knowing that as well and knowing that that Jensen didn't didn't agree that Dean yeah. should have died. I mean that that should that should be everything that yeah. anybody needs to know about yeah. it. So it, there were good moments in the episode. There were beautiful outside of everything else that's going on. Mm-hmm. The scene of Sam and Dean in the barn mm-hmm. is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And I remember before Jensen sort of started to speak about it and started to speak about, you know, this this beautiful story that they'd made and and if you don't if you don't watch the end, you're denying yourself that I used to get really mad mm-hmm. when people would like sh- like share comp pics and they'd ask the Jared and Jensen to recreate the barn scene. And I used to be like, Don't you think that over that? Why do you keep asking them to do mm-hmm. this? Mm-hmm. But I think I've heard a lot of people say that Jared and Jensen actually like doing those. That's probably the one part of the episode. I think that they are both like, not necessarily what's why they're having that moment, but I feel like it's the moment that they're proud of. Like, not that it's because Dean is dying. So I think that's why they don't mind doing that for fans, you know? So 
I I I seem to remember in the in the sort of the early days when they were just you know just kind of dissecting how it was to film and and things mm-hmm. like that. I think they said they both sort of used that scene to say goodbye to Sam and Dean mm-hmm. as well, you know, mm-hmm. respectively and to each other. Yeah. You know, Jared saying bye to Dean, Jensen saying bye to Sam, and they're both saying goodbye to their characters. And I don't the emotion, the the pure, raw emotion in that mm-hmm. scene, it could so easily be actor to actor yeah as well as character to character you know it's 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 more of a goodbye than just one character is dying it's a goodbye to 15 years of the show Mm -hmm. you know 15 years of these characters 15 years of them as they've said spending more time together than they did with their own families yeah and that's for that I think if you could if you can just isolate that out of the barn scene and say, you know, as a goodbye, as mm-hmm. an ending. Mm-hmm. That was beautiful. Cause I don't think I don't think Sam speaks again after that scene. Correct me if I'm wrong. Only thing he says but, is hey Dean after um Jensen says yeah, hey Sammy. Hey hey Sammy, hey Dean. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that that was goodbye. Mm-hmm. That was it. That was the the last thing that they said to each other. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I'm genuinely going to cry. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think if you if you can if you can sort of isolate that and take it take it outside of all the you know the, the <laughs> Dean dying, all the really clumsy you know kind of analogies and storytelling and even the fact that the the show had declined. In mm-hmm. recent series, mm-hmm. and I think even the most hardcore supernatural fan would agree that it wasn't as great towards the end as it was mm-hmm. in the beginning. That's uh, still, you know, that's still really beautiful. There's parts that are greater than the whole, I think. And the, I yeah. think that's kind of like how supernatural you could view it in general. So I guess it, you know, expecting, expecting them to hit it out of the park. But I just, in my mind, it's the intentionality of the writer, you know, like Andrew Dabb. Mm. He just, I just felt there were certain things that he did that were just mean, just mean, like mm. mean to characters that for somebody who's been with the show for a long time, I don't think he got, you know, I don't think he should have been, I don't think he should I have been allowed to write it. And I know that's usually how it goes, you know, but I've, I didn't, I wasn't a fan yeah, of anything. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how anyone came up with that and anybody else went, yeah, sounds great. Mm-hmm. You know, like that that was where you went. You could have done so much yeah. more. Yeah. And I do you know what I remember as well? After we'd all watched it and we were in the group chat, just like, what the fuck was that? Mm-hmm. And you know, falling apart to various degrees. I re- I remember Dandelion, um Dandelion Dreams dreaming whichever one it, I can't fucking remember. our friend <laughs> Dave, um saying that it was it was really cliche to have him die and it would have been more powerful to have him live you know any you know like I'm I'm not paraphrasing D here but I'm paraphrasing anybody can die it mm-hmm. takes strength to live yeah the um, resiliency was like where was that almost to an yeah. extent and I'm just like, and she made she made some really good points about from like a mental health aspect. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were on about that too, like how triggering, you know, that what that yeah. connotates for people, like it's like the giving up That's, aspect of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. The show, the show had really been a champion of always keep fighting. It existed before that, obviously, but it had always been a champion of. You keep moving forward. You keep going. You keep fighting. It doesn't matter what is put in your path. You keep going. And mm-hmm. then to see, and we discussed this in a you know an episode that came out maybe last week or the week before about um, Dean's Dean's potential mental illnesses. Mm-hmm. He never gave up. Mm-hmm. If he thought he was going to have to take himself out of the game, it was for matter reasons, not because he genuinely didn't want to keep going. Mm-hmm. So to have him, 
you know, I, I know that I know they have quite a lot of medical expertise, not CPR, but other medical expertise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How's he going to know from, you know, if like. Yeah, see, that goes, doesn't I'll make get, sense. I'll get the first aid kit. Like it's goes, different. No, no, I'm done. Why no. not phone an ambulance then? It's, it's different when you're in situations where you know unless he's just watched too many movies but like you know situations where like say he was pinned like between a car and something and they knew that if they moved it he was gone like that's not what that situation was right there like yeah they're they could have and even if even if sam didn't want to like spend time talking to the he could have just called 911 and just like even just like let it go people have to like yeah come to that situation people have to check yeah so it's just like "Mm, yeah yeah that's kind of like I mean, extrapolating the very little medical knowledge that I have, we can assume that the rebad didn't pierce long because he would have been fighting for breath. So I think... <laughs> and that was a seven-minute scene <laughs> where he was talking. Yeah, he would have... If he, he had time to do that, the, end of it. The, the paramedics could have maybe made it there within that amount of time. Like, that's the thing that gets me too. It wasn't just a quick, I've only got a short amount of time. Well, you're short amount yeah, of time. Yeah, they had a good was chat about really life. <laughs> he would, if they had phoned a medical professional, the whole episode would not have happened. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm cross now. <sighs> but we have now we have now dissected the hated episode. And you know what? We didn't even touch on how selfish Sam was for not holding a funeral for Dean. <laughs> And the oh, fucking God. freezer gate that went around Twitter. Oh, it was so oh funny. Oh, my gosh. That was genuinely, genuinely so funny. Yeah. Um, and absolutely dumb as well, because um, you, a hunter's funeral is just a body being burned. There doesn't have to be anybody else there. That's not mm-hmm. how it is. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. you know, pretty much everyone they knew was dead. So. Yeah. Um, Even though at this point, the assumption is people got brought back. At that yeah, point. but who was le- who was left? Donna, Jody, the girls. Mm-hmm. Pretty much it. I think so. Who else? Yeah, just... unless you count the people from Apocalypse. Yeah, then it would be Maybe. other Charlie, other Bobby, some of the hunters that they worked with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that is not that is not the life they that they lived. Yeah, it's hunting by its very nature is a pretty solitary thing. Mm-hmm. So if you're with a hunter when they pass, you give them a hunter's funeral, and you just pass the word along yeah yeah i mean they you know? did that with mary and then they had like a memorial after you know yeah they, they so you can have that and still there isn't to say that sam didn't have everybody together you know about yeah. to talk about dean at some point we don't know when that would have happened that wasn't shown um but at some point yeah 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 so now we've broken it down we never have to talk about it again yeah so if we just bring it we up never in have passing to watch again. You'll know why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it'll, it'll still get brought up in passing because we're still mm-hmm. mad. Yeah. We are yeah. still mad. We're done. Right now we've got a little bit of a, cl- I don't know if it's a cleanse, but at least it's it got it out. So, see. I, we've, I feel like we've talked through all of our issues mm-hmm. with that episode and how fucking bullshit it was. <laughs> oh, just found an ambulance. Why didn't they just, I'm, I'm more mad about that than anything else. <laughs> Oh, you twat! How did he end up in the hospital when he broke his leg? He broke uh, the leviathans, and he broke his leg, and he was like potted up to his thigh. I don't know because like a, like a full was... compound fracture. Someone took him to the fucking hospital, Sam, right? Because Sam was there, right? Yeah, yeah. So Sam must have brought him. They took they they took Bobby to the hospital when Bobby got shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, took, he took. Dean to the hospital when Dean's heart got fried. Um, <sighs> took Sam to the hospital after the trials. The hospital wasn't common, but it wasn't unknown. Oh, an ambulance! Yeah. Oh, for the love of God. Yeah. So anyway, I guess we can say, you know, if anybody's got any thoughts about the episode and our thoughts on the episode, reach out and let us know um, what you think. Yeah. As we, this is another long episode. <laughs> discussed but we needed it we needed it so yeah it, it needed it needed to be mm. to be talked through and cleansed yeah yeah i'm sad now okay so i'm also sad now 
Are you yeah. guys sad? We're sad. Yeah, we're sad. So if you want to reach out to us, uh, you can email us at idlinginthimpala at gmail.com or on Twitter, we are idling in the letter D Impala. And if you'd like to make your voice a mail, check the description for a link to send us a voice message. You could find links to our personal socials and our EO3 accounts in the description. And there's also a link to my author website with my original fiction. Don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe, a follow um, wherever you access the podcast and leave us a comment or a review. We want to hear from you. Talk to us, please. We're shouting into the void. <laughs> Shout back. <laughs> um, in the description, you will find the current causes that we are championing. So take a look at those. And with that, we will say thank you for joining us in the back seat. Fuck 1520. And we will see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye-bye.